starting. Chapter 16. Okay. All right. Chapter 16. We're going to do confidence intervals. Intervals for the sample mean. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you, well, let's see here. Talk about the requirements. Okay, number one, the data must come from a simple random sample. Okay? Now, some of these things I, I will tell you on your project. That um, so, for example, a stratified sample technically breaks the rules, but go ahead and do it anyway. On your final project, I'm going to want to do, to do um, confidence intervals and hypothesis tests on all of the types of, of polls that we do. Okay. Technically, the only one that's valid is the simple random sample, but I'm going to tell you to do it on the others anyway, because it's not that big of a Number two, the data comes from a normal population with n greater than or equal to 30. Okay? Now, how are you going to prove that the data you collected comes from a normal population? Trust. Trust. That's my answer. I'm just going to pick on Abby too. Abby, give me a good, good answer. Better answer than trust. What was your question again? How do you know your data comes from a normal population? Uh, and is greater than or equal to 30. Nope, that's not good enough. Okay. You need that. Dylan? Mm, well, I mean, we're going to display our data, right? So we'll know. We need to display, display our data. What should our data look like? No group. A bell curve. How do you make it? How do you know it's going to look like a bell curve? What graph are you going to make? Histogram. Uh, histogram. Okay. So make sure that your data are normal. If it's not normal, then this doesn't apply. I will tell you this on your final project: if your data are not normal, I expect they will be. But if they are not, then say, "Wow, our data is not normal, but we're going to do it anyway." But we're breaking the rules. Okay. So that's what you should tell me when you're doing your final project. Her data was not normal, but we're going to do confidence interval yesterday. Because you, anyway, because you asked us. Okay. Number three, sigma is known. Okay. What does sigma represent again? Which standard deviation? Population. Population. There is later on. So you're lucky in chapter 16. Oh, wait a second. Let me make sure before I say that. Yes, we're going to learn another one where sigma is not known. It's going to be a t distribution, not a z. Okay? The nice thing about chapter 16, what's going to make it nice for your test, is you're always going to use the same formula. But we are going to do a different thing if sigma is unknown. Okay? Is, is chapter 16 the last chapter we're covering? Chapter 16 is the last chapter we're covering for this test. Okay? All right. So... Um, typically, typically, most confidence intervals <coughs> follow this form. It's going to be some sort of a point estimate, plus or minus your margin. Of error. Okay, some examples of point estimates are x bar, p hat, or s. Okay, so what are these also called? In this, in this chapter, we're going to call them point estimates, but what are they also called? 
So you with the data point estimate, you said? P hat. P hat. Yeah. Okay. X bar is what? What's another word for X bar? Sample mean. It's the sample mean. P hat is your sample probability. Proportion. S is your. Sample standard deviation. What did you notice about all of these? They're all samples, right? So your sample statistics. Okay. So your point estimate is your sample statistic plus or minus some sort of a margin of error. Okay. Now I am going to give you the formula that you're going to need there. Um, your formula is going to be for this chapter um, the confidence interval when confidence interval for a mean with standard deviation no. Okay? It's going to be x bar plus or minus z sub alpha over 2 times the square root uh, of times sigma over the square root of that. Okay. Can you say that one more time? X, X bar, bar plus or minus your z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of that. Okay. Now, fair warning. I'm going to give you about four confidence interval formulas. This test will be easy because this will always be the correct formula you will use if I ask for a confidence interval on this test. The next test, that won't be so easy because I will say, oh, which, which one are you supposed to use? Okay. So that's what's going to make the next test harder than this one because in this one you're lucky because there's only one formula. The next one there's going to be a lot more. That you're supposed to run. Isn't x bar plus or minus z and then what does it say after x? z sub alpha over two. Okay. Now we talked a little bit about yesterday. We talked a little bit about or on Monday. Alpha is your level of significance, and it's the probability you are wrong. Okay. So typically, what's the most common alpha that we use? Is it 5%? 5%. This is, this, this is most common. Okay. Now, I know we've only got three minutes left, so I'm just going to give you a basic overview of what's happening here. Okay. The idea here is you've got some sort of a normal distribution. Okay. You've got some sort of a mean. Okay. You don't know what the mean is. This, this relates exactly to your question at the beginning of class, I think. Okay? You're going to give an X bar here, or an X bar here, or an X bar here. Okay? You don't know what it's going to look like. But the idea here is, this is going to be my sampling distribution of X bar. I don't know if my X bar is low, or right on the money, or high. Okay? But if I go out two standard deviations, two standard deviations, how much data should be within those two values? 95%. Okay? So the idea here is if I use an alpha of 0.05, well, I've got 5% in both tails, correct? Okay? How much do I have in this tail? 2.5. So then I'm going to call this alpha over 2, which is going to be equal to 2.5%. And this is your other alpha over 2, and this is going to also equal 2.5%. Okay? This 2.5% plus that 2.5% is the probability that you're wrong, but you're going to be right 95% of the time. 
Okay, so conceptually, that's what's going on. I'm going to take whatever I've got here. I'm going to take my point estimate. Typically, we're going to go out about two standard deviations. Okay, if I, if I want a 95% confidence interval, if I go out about two standard deviations, so your z sub alpha is almost always going to be, it's actually going to be 1.96. I'll explain why it's 1.96 and not two later, but that's close to two, right? And then you're going to take your standard deviation, you're going to divide it by your square root of that, okay? So this piece right here is your margin of error. This is your point estimate. Okay? So I know that was quick. This is your quick 10-minute overview of chapter 16. I know that's not near enough, but theoretically, you could do all the homework with this that equation. Okay, now we're going to spend more time on Friday. We're going to cover the rest of chapter 16. I'll explain why we don't really use 2 we use 1.96, but we'll save that for Friday. Your homework on this is going to be due the following Monday. We'll do a review on Monday, and you can take the computer test Monday or the written test Wednesday. Okay. When you say or, you mean we need You can take them both on Monday if you want. No, not Monday. You can't. Sorry. You can only take the written test on Monday because we're going to meet so next Wednesday. We'll meet on a regular class. Okay. We'll meet here Friday. We'll meet here Monday. Next Wednesday, we'll meet in our regular class in science. Okay. All right. See you all on Friday. Where do you want to use the stuff? Oh yeah, go ahead and let me go ahead.